ride, baby. Hey, I'm Maddie. I'm living in my converted minivan on a quest throughout the U.S. for adventure and beer. Today, I'm in Massachusetts. A year ago, I bought this touristy sweatshirt at a thrift shop in western Massachusetts because I needed some warmer clothes. And little did I know, I would one day too be a Cape Cod tourist. Massachusetts, wonderful place so far. As I was driving south, I stopped by Salem because it's still October, so I wanted to see some witchy stuff. It was really cool because yes, they're very into Halloween, everything was decorated and festive, but my favorite part was the memorial because yes, like witches in Halloween, that's fun, but people were also put to death. I also got to go to this really cool place for dinner called Lookout Farm that was a real farm with rolling hills, beautiful sunset, plus picnic table set up, really cute. They had beer. Long story short, I love Massachusetts so far. And it's getting even better. I rented a campsite in Cape Cod. I'm about to go explore the National Seashore, but let me give you a tour of the campsite first. It's so cool. Nice big flat area, lovely spot for the old hammock, and this, I'm the only campsite with this. I just got really lucky, but there's a view of a pond. Also got a fire ring, also got the picnic table, and lots and lots of room at this beautiful campsite. We're about to have a bit of spontaneous fun. I got some recommendations for things to do and our first stop is Palmet Trail. I don't know the terrain, whether it's gonna be sandy or more sturdy. I'm wearing my trail runner, so hopefully that's good enough. It's one of these guys, an interpretive trail, so we can learn. So if you can see this streak, of the stuff that's not as flaky. I believe, according to this information, that is pitch. This is called a pitch pine. And for centuries, people boiled the wood to make tar. And they use the tar to seal boats and barrels and stuff. So, interesting. It's so cool to think about like how people used to just use stuff found in the forest so for so much. Another thing to note is how these trees, which are pitch, pitch pines, all the needles are at the top and then down here in the shade they don't really grow anything. And that's going to change as we, as the valley opens up. There's our first view of the sea. Man, when I was in Acadia I saw the ocean but there was islands and peninsulas and stuff. It wasn't flat on out there like it is here. These are some more pitch pines and the process of putting um, limbs out around the ground is called skirting. And why they do that is because of the harsh conditions from being by the sea that helps it survive better. Whoa, -ho -ho. some valley views. Ocean! I love it! For thousands of years, cranberries have been growing here naturally. So I was just looking at the picture. I was like, oh, these leaves sort of look like them. And so I was looking down in there and oh my gosh, there they are! I want to try one, but I'm nervous. I guess they wouldn't put it in the pamphlet if it was, it could potentially be not good for you. Just one or two. If it's poisonous after all, at least I got to live the life I wanted. Definitely not ripe. Has a big old seed, a very chalky, furry texture. <laughs> It wasn't good, but it was a real naturally grown cranberry. From the 1890s, 
to the 1940s, the end of that decade, there was a huge cranberry operation here. And the pamphlet says, not only did the cranberries grow here, but they could also use the water from the Palmet River. They were living off the land. They wanted their cranberry sauce. So here's a picture of what it used to look like versus now. They say that when the railroads started up, that's what really made this place become a big tourist place, tourist destination. When I go hiking, I think a lot about the, just the natural science of the place. For as long as humans have been on the earth, they've been a part of nature too. Sometimes responsibly, sometimes not. And so it's really interesting to have this historical information and think about, I'm here today, but 100 years ago, who was here? 100 years before that, who was here? And so on. As for now, we are at Coast Guard Beach, one of the five best beaches in the world. That was incredible. I definitely have to spend more time on the beach. Tomorrow I'm going sailing, which I'm kind of nervous about because I'm kind of rusty. But then after that, beach time. But for now, I got a campfire to go build. Alrighty, so I bought firewood, but it was $9 and I got six logs. So that's normally why I don't have fires, but that's okay. I'm gonna see what other sticks I can find. Look at this cool multi-tool. My dad gave me this, so shout out to you, dad. So if you can't tell, I've never used an ax before. After a lot of time and a lot of persistence later, this is how deep it is. You know, like I made significant progress, but it's not budging. So my plan is to put this part right in the flame and that'll eventually crack. <laughs> I tried though, that was fun. Okay, so. This is the fire starter they gave me. I've never used this kind before, but okay, we'll see how it works. I really hope it works. So I don't have much other tinder besides this. Please work. It's smelling like something's caught on fire. Probably not going to burn very well if it doesn't break very well. 
This is another part of solo traveling that's so much fun. If someone else was here, they would want to chop the wood and we'd have to, you know, be civil about it, but I just like doing things myself. And now I can show you guys the feast. My dinner that I, I completely am making up as I go. Okay, so I got crescent roll dough. I'm gonna line the pie iron with this dough, and then I'm gonna put pesto, cheese, and mushrooms in there. Then do the same thing on the other side, so it's the sandwich, and we'll see how we go. Here is our finished product all buttoned up. I'm gonna put it right where it's hottest. I waited five minutes spun it around and waited five more minutes. So now I'm gonna check what's going on. The smokiness is probably not a good sign. Whoops. <laughs> the inside looks pretty good. But the good thing is we have plenty of supplies. Look how good that is. Even though the outsides are really burned. This is so good. This is one of my best campfire inventions ever. It's supposed to taste like pizza, and it does. But it's really gooey and soft, buttery. Mm. It's perfect. up to go to the bathroom about an hour ago and then I was kind of like not wanting to fall back asleep but totally just wanting to be lazy and relax then I saw my hammock and I was like yes I've had such a good morning of just laying around enjoying the peace but the sailboat company I reserved with yesterday just called and said they had to cancel my reservation because it's too cold. What am I going to do with the rest of my day today? I have two things I want to do in mind. See if I can see seals on a pier and then there is a walk through some marshland I want to do. So. It's going to be a different day than planned, but it's going to be a good day nonetheless.
religious Chatham fish pier that I went to. Sometimes the fishermen drop fish in the water by accident and seals come and eat it. So you can see seals in nature. They were really huge. They were bigger than a dog, which is not what I was picturing. There wasn't a lot to see other than the seals. So now I'm headed to a lighthouse. the water to eat my clam chowder. A Massachusetts staple. Spill my oyster crackers. It's so creamy though. It's, it's loaded with more stuff than I was expecting. So good. Tastes more creamy than it does fishy. I haven't really done a good proper hike so far. So last thing I'm gonna do today is I'm at the Cape Cod Museum of Natural History and I'm doing some trails they have that are, you know, you don't have to go through the museum. They, they're they just on their property. Um, and it's gonna, we're gonna see a lot of different environments. So this is a salt marsh, home to lots of different creatures. The changing tides and everything makes it flooded and with tides coming in and out, there's always new nutrients. And now we're walking through upland forest. All of a sudden there are just trees and solid ground instead of marshiness. This is what's coming up and I bet it's gonna be really cool. All of a sudden, the trees open up and, oh, it's a marsh again, and then a beach after that. Salt marshes are really important because a lot of animals, in fact, it's a lot of fish and shellfish eaten in New England, spend part of the, their life cycles in the salt marsh. So I have this guy to thank for that clam chowder I had earlier. This kind of, I don't know what to call it. Maybe it's a dune, but big sandbar with tall grass going on top. This really reminds me of the place I had my clam chowder earlier with the lighthouse. It reminds me of that place, but it's so much less people here. I guess that's because you have to hike a trail and like, there's like not, it's not a big tourist site, but I appreciate that. I appreciate the peace. So I'm noticing on trees like that one, there's some light green fuzzy stuff that coats each branch. It looks like a fuzzy turtleneck sweater if it was knit for a tree with a lot of arms. My guess is that it is a, a parasitic species um, similar to mistletoe or um, the stuff that grows on live oak, Spanish moss. So what do you all think? What do you think that is?
You know what I just noticed? This gravel is pieces of sh seashell. They are so fancy out here. Cape Cod is, I think, one of the only places on the East Coast that you can watch the sunset over water. So, gotta do it while we're here. The sunset is going down somewhere over here, but I have positioned myself to look at this. Because I think watching the colors go down over here will be even prettier. This place is so beautiful. I'm lucky enough to go to a lot of beautiful places. And you know what they say about beautiful places. You gotta have beer in them. Remember when I said I went to dinner at a place called Lookout Farm? Well, they also make their own beer. Oh, this is hard cider. Well, I'll have to have another beer later, but for now, I'm drinking this beautiful cider with this beautiful view. I brought a great snack spread, complete with peanut butter, pretzels, candy corn, It's been really cool because I've watched these clouds move across the whole sky as it got dark and I can see the rain coming down. Like I can see the wind blowing the rain back, which looks really cool. Now that would have been a very nice cohesive into the video but if I am truly taking you all on these adventures with me you got to be here for my chaotic parts too and right now it is dark I'm hungry and I'm sleeping at a Walmart an hour away from here so come along for the journey I am just going to sit here and eat my dinner which is pretzels and peanut butter a continuation of the snack I was eating out there I just had a scary moment because I was using the light in my car that the battery, that like the battery charges and it turned off and I was like, oh my gosh, what if my battery's dead? But I started my car and it was fine. So, okay, good. Thanks for looking out for me, car. But now I'm using my solar powered lantern that I use for camping. So we're set on that. I'm gonna eat a mini cucumber, um, you know, for my health. Mm, gotta look out, gotta be healthy on the road. But I don't feel like getting out of my car. It's windy, it's cold, it's dark. <sighs> okay. One, two, three. Here I go. The trunk was locked. It wasn't that bad. Uh, but I have to wash this. <sighs> so I'm actually super full now between the peanut butter and pretzels and that cucumber. And if you're thinking, like, why couldn't I have just got out my stove and cooked like I always do? Yes, I totally could have done that. It's just cold and dark, and I just didn't feel like it. So, that was just me being lazy. So, I'm gonna roll up these windows and blast the heat on this drive to Walmart. The drive went on good. Now, I am hanging out in a, a nice lighted parking lot. I'll go use the bathroom at Wendy's before bed and then there is a Walmart parking lot that allows overnight parking just over there. Okay so now I have my window covers and everything up and I'm ready to just chill for the next couple hours before I go to bed. And good thing I have a few hours and I'm still in Massachusetts because I haven't completed part of my road trip brew essay challenge yet of having a Massachusetts beer in Massachusetts. So this is, I can't read this, Nadu. Oh, okay. So 
The beer is called A Year with Dr. Nandu, and it's an American IPA by Aeronaut Brewing Company in Somerville, Massachusetts. Massive Cheez-Its, as I like to say. Nice and foamy. Tastes like Massachusetts. Tastes like the feel of walking down a brick sidewalk in Salem, or watching the sunset on at Lookout Farm. Tastes like the wind in your hair at the beach, and learning about different species on a hike. Thanks for coming along on the journey with me. It's, as you can tell, it's an, always an interesting time. Let me know what you thought about this video. Um, and I hope to see you next time. Y'all take care.